we don't think about mental development. We think about physical development. Well, what about our mind? What about our state of mind? How many things do you do every day for your state of mind? Not too many, right? So this is something that really becomes important to understand. Why are we putting all of the effort into our body? Because if we don't take care of our mind as well, our mind affects our body. Where do you think the stress and chronic illness comes from, right? Side by side, this is how it happens. So look at this. This is about mental health. I think you're understanding this more and we're hearing more and more about mental health today. And we think mental health is like someone who's sick. It isn't that. Mental health happens every day. Can you see this? This is what happens in a period of hours sometimes. You wake up, you might be feeling good. You get a bad phone call, you're going down. You get to work, things aren't working the way you thought, you're starting to feel anxious. So you're going up and down the scale, sometimes all day long, up and down and up and down. So as you can see, there is a way to have early intervention so that you actually can have a better perspective and deal with things easier and understand things better. And instead of going down, you can recover and begin recovering. So there's two things. There's the preventative, and then there's what do I do in the moment when I feel myself going down. So meditation can help, right? Meditation is an ancient art. We know that. There's been a lot of study on it. Uh, Aetna Insurance Company in 2015 did a study, and you can see all the different things that began to happen. So you can see from this all the different things that happen with decrease in the stress levels, with increase in sleep. 3,000 a year is what they discovered in productivity. What do you think your boss would think about if you could save 3,000 per person? Now, that's American dollars, but... That's a lot of money, isn't it? 2,000 saving on visits to the doctor. That's huge. So there's a challenge with this, though. How many people in the room have tried meditation and quit because it just, your mind was too busy, you don't have enough time, you thought it was boring? Raise your hand. How many people have never tried meditation? Raise your hand. You know, I'll tell you something funny. <laughs> in America, in different, I, I travel all over the world, and when I tell people that I'm coming to India, they go, oh my gosh, that must be so great. Everybody there meditates. <laughs> and over the last six months as I've been traveling and having programs in India, I would say 90% of the people don't meditate in every program that I've done, 90%. So I get it. <laughs> Believe me, I get it. Because I was right there with you. You see that first person? <laughs> that was me. And I think that's a lot of us. You know, we have all this stress, we have all these challenges, but we don't know what to do with it. And you think you're going to meditate. Well, who has time? And you're not going to do what your parents did. Millennials today are not going to do what their mothers and fathers do. And it's all across, it's all ages. So we have to find some different way of getting that peace of mind. But what if we could get the benefits of meditation in an entirely different way? What if when you listen to a new form of meditation, it felt so good? that you enjoy doing it? And what if your mind didn't have to be still? Because that's the biggest complaint. My mind is too busy. I'm an A-type person. Fine, guess what? Your mind doesn't have to be still. And you can do it in five minutes. So since this was my challenge, of course, as I began putting everything together, after my years of study with all of these teachers, I took elements from everything I learned. And that's my skill. 
I pull together all this incredible wisdom and knowledge, and then through the inspiration that came through me, I developed SOS method and concept meditations, and a very special formula that includes music. What do you think happens when we hear music that we like? What's the first thing that happens? You relax. You're not worried about your mind having to be still because you just like it, right? Another thing to understand is what they're finding is with dementia and Alzheimer's, the last place to go in your brain is where music is. So you hold on to music. There's something about it that you love. Now, is it the music that makes this happen? No. This is one of the elements. It's music, tones, words, and white space. But And this is where I go in the middle, because when you feel it, you like it. You know, you're, you're like surprised by it. And then as you do it again and again, it's cumulative. So you want to think about doing this again and again and again.